Hi there. As you may have heard, quantum computing is a promising approach to solving certain problems that are difficult for even the fastest supercomputers, and things are starting to get real. Rudimentary quantum processors have already been used to simulate the properties of small molecules and solve simple optimization problems, and such devices are now accessible for programming over the cloud. The types of operations and algorithms are a bit different from those used in classical computers, harnessing features of quantum mechanics like superposition and entanglement. So, is it true then that anyone can write quantum programs even without a PhD in quantum physics? In this video, we'll see how to do just that using Qiskit, the Quantum Information Science Toolkit. This open source project enables anyone to write quantum programs, send them to real quantum processors, and analyze the results. It also has built-in quantum simulators so you can test the behavior of your small programs before you run them for real. Ready? Let's get going. First, you'll want to get Python 3.5 or higher. I recommend the Anaconda distribution, which includes Jupyter and most of the other packages you'll need. Once you have Python installed, fire up a command prompt and use pip to get the latest stable version of Qiskit. Or if you're a serious developer and want to live on the cutting edge, you can fork the open source repository available on GitHub. All right, now we're ready to actually start programming with Qiskit. An interactive Jupyter session is a great way to get started. Once you've imported Qiskit, you can start defining registers and circuits right away. Here, we've created a quantum circuit QC acting on a 2-qubit quantum register QR and 2-qubit classical register CR. Now, operations can be added to our circuit by calling the desired functions in order. Here, we'll do a Hadamard gate on qubit 0 and then a control not gate with qubit 0 as the control and qubit 1 as the target. When applied to a real pair of qubits, this circuit will entangle them. Okay, in case you didn't quite follow that last part, let's take a quick step back. Classical bits can be 0 or 1, and a measurement always yields the bit's actual state. Quantum bits, on the other hand, or qubits, can be of one of the two classical states or a superposition state, which can be represented by any point on the surface of the block sphere. Measurements still yield 0 or 1, but the probability of each outcome depends on the state of the qubit. The Hadamard gate is one of the most common gates used in quantum computing. It transforms the quantum state such that the 0 state is mapped onto a superposition state called the plus state, and the one state is mapped onto a superposition called state called the minus state. The converse is also true. If you apply the Hadamard gate to a qubit in the plus state, it'll take it to the zero state, and applying it to a qubit in the minus state will take it to the one state. This gate is often used at the start of an algorithm to create superposition, and at the end of an algorithm to get phase information, for instance, to distinguish the plus state from the minus state, even though the measurement can only inherently distinguish zero and one. The second gate we apply in our circuit, the control not gate, it's easy to understand classically. If the control qubit is in the one state, it flips the target qubit. If the control qubit is in the zero state, the target qubit is left alone. What's interesting is what happens if the control qubit is in a superposition. In that case, the qubits become entangled. The measurement outcomes of the individual qubits appear completely random, but they're also perfectly correlated. Remarkably, this statement remains true even if a Hadamard gate is applied to both qubits prior to the measurement. This is a key result in quantum mechanics, and we've just seen how to demonstrate it in a few simple lines of code using Qiskit. Well, almost. First, we need to add the measurements, and then we can run the circuit. We could simply add the measurements to the circuit we just created, but since we want to do the measurement in two different ways, both with and without a Hadamard gate beforehand, it'll be easier to create separate circuits for the measurements, and then combine them with our entangling circuit. The measure Z circuit will just do our standard measurement in the Z basis, also known as the comp computational basis. A single Qiskit function lets us measure both qubits in the quantum register and store the results in the classical register. We'll call our second measurement circuit measure x, and in this case we'll do a Hadamard gate before the measurement, effectively measuring each qubit in the x basis, also known as the superposition basis. Now that we've defined our measurement circuits, we can append them to our entangling circuit using the addition operator, creating two new circuits, test z and test x. We're now ready to test our circuits. We'll start using one of Qiskit's built-in quantum simulators to see what happens. The command is called execute, and you can see we're going to execute our two circuits called test z and test x on the back end called local chasm simulator, and we'll run the experiment a thousand times to get enough statistics. The simulation will run fairly quickly, and uh, when we get the result, we'll see that in each case, two possible states were observed, either both qubits being zero or both qubits being one. We can also take advantage of Qiskit's visualization uh, toolbox to visualize the results. In this case, a simple histogram will suffice, and we can see that indeed there is perfect correlation between the two qubits, 
and no instances of either 0, 1, or 1, 0 for both types of measurements. This shows that the, the circuit really entangled these qubits. Finally, we can use Qiskit to run our circuit on a remote backend like those available through the IBM Q experience. We simply pass our API token, which we stored in a file called qconfig, to the register function in order to set up a connection to the backend server. Now that we're connected, we can pick a backend. In this case, we'll use the 5 qubit chip named Tenerife. It's available now, and there aren't too many jobs ahead of us. To run our code on this hardware, we simply call the execute function again, this time with the new backend. We can check the status, and as soon as we see that it's done, we can again get the results. In this case, the histograms show that although most of the time we, we see 0, 0, and 1, 1, just like we did with the simulator, in a few cases we do see instances of 0, 1, or 1, 0, showing that the correlation is not quite perfect. But that's to be expected since this is still just an early prototype quantum processor and it's not perfect yet. That's all the time we have for today, and I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to programming with Qiskit. Please check out some of these helpful resources to learn more and get involved. Thanks.